Hey, g'day guys, Andrew Dwight. Hey, today we're going to talk about trusses and probably more complex roofs. Now, I've done plenty of tutorials on trusses and how to create them before, and feel free to go through our channel and check those out. However, I uh, had a lot of uh, requests from even experienced Plusbeck users on how to go about creating trusses for a roof such as this. And I'm going to explain that in a little bit more detail. I'll try and be to the point. There's some critical things that you need to know about trusses. Is One is the span is the distance between from end to end and usually a truss would uh, not have an internal load point however it can have an internal load point and that's something that you probably want to have your truss manufacturer do for you however plus spec will create trusses from external uh, wall plate to external wall plate and therefore there'll be no internal load bearing because basically a truss is self-supporting trusses are probably more expensive than buying the lumber individually yet less expensive when it comes to installation and they can be quite strong and, uh, and a very good solution to many problems especially if you want to have an open plan living. Now you'll notice that in these trusses we have red trusses. Now red basically uh, in plus spec shows where the most typical point loads would be. Okay so this is called a girder truss right which basically means that this girder truss here would hold up another truss or in this case several trusses through here right okay and this is a truncated girder truss which basically means that the top's being cut out of it if I go over to here we have a typical girder truss okay now this girder truss doesn't have the top cut out of it therefore it's not truncated uh, and this here is a truncated girder truss because a girder truss is holding other trusses basically uh, it's a beam or a girder okay now I'm going to show you how to create these and how to ascertain where you should start drawing your trusses from. So what I've got is I've got another SketchUp model here, uh, which I can open up, and it's sort of simplified a little bit. Now an L-shaped roof is very simple to create a truss on, because basically it's a simple uh, L-shape, really. It's uh, not too hard to figure it out. And the only thing that you really need to know when you're creating an L-shaped roof is which is the longest span, okay? So I can see that the span from here to here is longer than from here to here because my ridge is higher. All right. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to move the face out from underneath here. I'll move it out on an axis. And I'll move it out, say, 30 meters. Okay. And I'll just quickly create the trusses. And the reason why I did that number one, I moved it out 30 meters so it makes it easier for me to move it back the right distance but I also did it so we can see what's going on with the roof and this isn't a complex roof to pretty much do this one in my head but as I said before longer span first so what I'm doing is I'm just basically dividing uh, these two roofs that's one roof but blending into the other and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my trusses on the longer span first so I've gone to my roof tools, I've clicked on my, my roof trusses this is a hip roof, so I'm going to use hip roof. However, if you want to use Dutch gable, whatever it is, you can do that later on. Uh, or you can do that just by clicking the drop down. Okay, so I'm going to go hip truss. Uh, 22 and a half degrees is the pitch that I did my roof on. I'm not going to worry about overhangs and everything. It's just about showing you how to get these trusses set up. And the first thing I want to do is, knowing this is my longest span, is I'm going to trace my longest span. What I probably should do is keep an eye on valley trusses here. If I had had that clicked, I'll explain what that does later. Uh, it would have created a set of trusses that go up on a rake. And I'll explain that later. And put end truss. I'm going to have it ticked for the first truss that I draw. Okay. And what the end truss means is basically where I click my last click, essentially it's going to put a truss through here. Okay. It's not a girder truss, it's just a simple finished truss. Because usually when, when builders on site put trusses in, they start from one end, they work out the distance back to their first truncated girder, and all of that distances can be set in here. You can see at the moment I've got 1800. And that's, I have more load on this truss because it's holding this roof here, and that's why it's red. Now I'm going to do the same from the other end. However, I don't want an end truss because essentially I'm going to go along my span first, and I'm going to click onto my 
last truss, oops, slow down a little bit. Right, and essentially what will happen is that I won't have an end truss because the maximum spacing for trusses, which is in my dough log over here, is 600 mil. So if I had an end truss, I could have a truss right against this and therefore it just cost me one extra truss I don't require. Okay, and now the, I'm going to go and put in my uh, last truss here and I'm going to now click include belly trusses, right? And I need to obviously make sure my pitch is right, so it's 22.5, okay? This just means, because I'll explain why in a second. <clears throat> right, and I do need an end truss in this one here because the end truss is actually going to be my girder truss. And because I've chosen include valley trusses, it knows that it's probably more than likely going to, um, let's go to say, zoom in here. I don't have to be square on my last one because I set my square distance the first one, uh, it knows that it's going to go into another roof and therefore assumes that it would be a, a girder truss. Okay, that move takes a little bit longer because it's got to figure out the heights of all my trusses. Now, essentially, you'll notice that I now had valley trusses go up the other trusses and therefore my roof can plane. So it means this roof truss, this roof line lines up with this roof line. And that's a simple one to do, very, very easy to do. Stick around because I'm going to show you how to create a complex uh, set out for roof trusses here. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing again. I've already got this face created. <clears throat> if you ever want to know how to create a roof from uh, a face, you can just go and check out our other tutorials. We've got some really cool tutorials there that will help you out with this. Okay, now this one's more difficult, you see, because I have two roofs that overlap and it doesn't kind of make sense. Where do I stop my trusses and where do I uh, start my trusses and how do I make the roofs blend into each other? It's a very common issue. Now, I'm going to show you uh, common mistakes and probably that most people make, including myself, have made in the past, is by figuring out where to draw because we can see that we have a roof, I'm just using my rectangle tool to explain here, a roof here, and we have a roof here, which we should have started from another corner. Right, I've got two roofs, but the problem is that this truss is going to cut into this truss, and it doesn't really make obvious sense. And, and with my set out, here's where the issue came in, is I have a box inside, and that doesn't work for me because it's very difficult uh, to mesh these trusses in. Essentially, we're going to have girder trusses, like I mentioned before, and those go to trusses are going to hold up uh, each side. So what I really want to do is I actually want to separate my roof, right? I want to make it so that I have a re my rectangle so I know where to draw from, but I really want to uh, make it so that I don't have an internal rectangle. And it's pretty easy. Really all I needed to do was just go here, right? And if I erase this one here, I now have no internal rectangle. Right, and if I want to create this roof, first things first is I want to figure out which is my highest roof, which is this one here, because I want to hold up less with a shorter girder truss. Uh, so basically, the longer the girder truss, the more weight that it holds. Uh, so you can see that if I ran this roof the other way and I ran these trusses all the way through, this girder truss here would be longer, therefore it's holding more weight and therefore it has to be stronger and therefore it's more expensive and it distributes more load through your frame. Over here, I want to do the same thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my truss tool. Here, trusses, and it's a hip roof again. I'm going to keep it nice and simple because we can get into uh, Dutch cables and that later. Okay, I've got, I've got the same pitch, so I've got the same everything. I don't want a valley truss on my first move. And if you've got a roof like this, you should do the same. Now, I know that this is the span of this set of trusses, and I don't want my end truss. Well, actually, I do want my end truss on my first one. I'm going to click here, go up to the center there, and I now have an end truss. Okay, and I'm going to go end truss off for this one here. And I now have that truss in there. Now, here comes the interesting bit. 
I now need to have a set of trusses come that, that blend in with this roof here, so I'm going to need a valley truss. And depending on the speed of your computer will be the speed that it uh, needs to be done. I always seem to have too much things open. If you ever get that, it's because I'm scrolling in in a blank area. This is going to create valley trusses up here. So the faster computer you've got, the faster this will work. And sometimes you may even want to just do your trusses outside in another model uh, if you're working on a large model. And then copy paste in place, which is a really good way of using a different model to... Uh, I'm just going to explain a little bit of what happened here. Now, this girder truss here is holding up this roof here. Okay. Now, here's one of the bigger problems is that now I need another girder truss to hold another girder truss. So this girder truss here is going to be super, super strong. Okay, You can change the thickness of your bottom cord if you want to, but really this should be left up to your truss manufacturer. This is just a good way to understand you know, where your services may run, uh, where everything may run. And this one here, I'm just going to click to there. It won't create the trusses out of level. It's just because I drew my span first, this is just giving me the length of the span so it knows where to put my girder trusses in. Okay, and now I have a perfectly trussed roof, which is probably the most economical way to build this roof. Uh, and everything works. So I can plane my roof in here. And I have no more than 600 spacing. Uh, usually they would put a ridge beam in here, which you can see in my other... Uh, tutorials which will show you how to put a little ridge in there so they can run a valley down here. But that's the way to create a roof like that. Now, I've got one more complex example here. It's basically a replication of what I just did. However, I'm going to show you how to do it. And because it's a set out, if you get used to figuring out how to set out a roof, I'm going to move that out here into a set distance out here like this. So you see I snapped to my red axis. I can see down the bottom that I've got 40 meters roughly, so I'm going to go 40 m enter. Okay, and this would be how I would set this out. Once again, oops, once again, I should stop doing that. We we have three roofs here now, and so I'm going to go here rectangle. I'm going to go rectangle from here to here. And I know that this is my longest span because it's the highest ridge. Okay, But you can see if I did that, I'm going to have internal boxes again. And I don't, that's no good. I can't create a trust there and I can't create a trust there. And this is the most important thing to understand when you're creating uh, a trust roof. Okay, How to set it out. So I do need these lines because they're kind of like formwork. But I need to know where I'm going to draw my trusses from. Okay, so they're gone, and I need all of my rectangles on the outside, as mentioned previously. Okay, now I can create my longer span first, so my first truss would go here with an end truss. My second truss would go here with an end truss. Okay, and then I'm going to have, uh, a, and I'm going to create my next longer span, which is this one here, because it's the next highest ridge. And then I'm going to create this one here. And then I'm going to create two saddles to go into here. Now, we'll just speed this up a little bit so you can see what's going on. Trusses. So the key is keep these boxes to the outside. Figure out how to segregate your roof. Now, I'm not talking today about... Uh, turn my belly trusses off again. I'm not talking about skewed roofs, and that's probably uh, a topic for another day. However, if you do go through my other truss videos, you'll notice that I've shown how to do this. Uh, and I need an end truss. You know, I can even line up with here because that way I know it's the center. Okay. And I'm going to turn my end truss off for the next one. Zoom in. Okay. <clears throat> you see that I've got two trusses close together there, that's because I shouldn't have had an end truss there. Right, this is a large roof. It took some time to do on my computer. I do have 
I do thrash computers and leave things unopened as I shouldn't uh, a fair bit. Now, I said do the next longest trust first. However, it's going to be probably easier for me to actually do this little one here. Cleveland Valley Trusses. As I said, if you're getting a lot of trusses and a lot of roofs, sometimes the best thing to do is to um, do it in another model and then copy paste in place. Okay, you can see I made a mistake there. Basically what I did is include valley trusses, I included valley trusses only. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off and you can utilize that uh, later. So what I'm going to do, instead of having to redraw that and wait again, I can actually just close this, select that valley truss, right click, trusses, edit truss, and go and deselect and reselect. Save me redrawing it there and there and go submit. Okay, now be patient if it isn't uh, your computer. So you can see a redraw there. Uh, sorry, it's sometimes not your computer. There's a lot of complex calculations going on here to create these. And the same I would do over here. Okay. And so on and so on, guys. So essentially, breaking it into different pieces with no internal box will create everything that you want to do. Remember that the longest span truss should always be drawn first. And these trusses are parametric. So if you do, for some reason, have to change the pitch of the roof, you can select the roof, change the pitch of the roof, and do it all again. Uh, without having to redraw, which saves you a lot of time. Just be patient, guys. As I said, there's a lot going on, and uh, I think it's the fastest way you can possibly create trusses in any software I've ever seen. So give it a try. I'd be interested to hear. If you've got any comments or questions, by all means, uh, put them in the box down the bottom, and I'll actually personally answer them myself. Uh, if you have uh, anything else that you'd like to see, by all means, uh, ask for that, and check out my other videos, guys. They're really informative and they'll help you become a better designer and a better builder and save cost on a project. And that's what it's all about. All right, guys, cheers.